when Umar ibn Khattab went to Jerusalem and Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, he came to Umar ibn Khattab and Umar was wearing his old clothes with patches in them. And he said, Amir al Mu'mineen, and Umar was the leader of the superpower of his time. He said, Oh Amir al Mu'mineen, these are people, the kings want to meet you, and these are people who live in opulence and pomp. Why don't you for a moment change your clothes? And Umar ibn Khattab he went into the tent, he took off his old clothes and he wore his new clothes and he came out of the tent and he took a few steps and he turned to Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah and he said, Oh Abu Ubaidah, we were as the lead group of people and Allah honored us with the Islam, where will we be? if we leave and relinquish the teachings of Islam and he went back into the tent and he wore his own clothes and wallahi Umar remained Umar and the kings who wore their pomp where are they in history nobody remembers them why because Izzah comes from Allah to Izzah man to Shah wa tazillu man to Shah Allah gives Izzah and Allah disgraces whoever he wishes and you look at the state of the Muslim today where is our Izzah why? Because we've left the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. And Allah has abased us in the manner that we find ourselves today. The Prophet said, La yu'minu ahdukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa walidihi wa nasi ijma'een. That none of you can be a true believer until I am more beloved to him. I am more beloved and dearer to him. Then his own parents, his father, his children, and the entirety of humanity. And really, in the recent saga, how many Muslims do you see? Progressive, moderate Muslims. They come on national TV and they said, No, we weren't offended. We weren't offended. It's a matter of freedom of speech. I ask you, if they depicted your husband or your wife in the wildest form that you could imagine because this is what they did with the Prophet Sallallahu They depicted him as the antithesis of what he stood for. How would you feel? How would you feel if they depicted you as the vilest and the gross form that you could imagine and then they plastered it worldwide? They regarded you as a terrorist. Would you come out of your home? Wouldn't you feel ashamed if they depicted your mother or your father in the most gross manner that you could imagine. How would you feel? If you say you wouldn't feel anything, then you are a man who's redundant of any shame. You have no ghayra left in you. You have no shame left in you. Because the reality is that the Prophet ﷺ is closer to the believers than himself. He is our eternal guide. He is our eternal guidance. And if we relinquish the teachings of Islam, this was a man who stood at night and cried for the believers. And you don't feel bad when they depict the Prophet ﷺ in a foul manner? What kind of Iman do you have? None of you can be a true believer until he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than he loves himself. Your Iman cannot be perfected until your love for the Prophet ﷺ is more than yourself and shall I tell you of a group of people who did not want any harm to come to the Prophet ﷺ. There was a Sahabi called Zayd ibn Dathna anhu, and he killed one of the Mushrikeen on the battle of Badr and in a later battle the Mushrikeen caught Zayd anhu, and they were about to kill him and Zayd anhu said can I pray two rakats? Can I pray two rakats? And they said yes and Zayd anhu prayed two very short rakats and then he turned to the mushrikeen and he said the reason i read two very short records because i didn't want you to think that i am scared of death and i'm delaying death and then abu sufyan came and abu sufyan was a mushrik at the time and he said oh they would you prefer that muhammad be in your place and Zayd ibn Dathna radiallahu said, I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah, I would prefer to die than a thorn prick the Prophet wasallam. And it was on that occasion that Abu Sufyan said, I have sat with the leaders of the Romans. I have sat with the emperors of the Persians. But I swear by Allah, I have never seen a group of people who love Muhammad like whose companions love Muhammad and why not? Doesn't Allah say, We have elevated your zikr. 
if anybody else was insulted in the world, would there be such an outcry? No, because Allah has elevated the status of the Prophet We have elevated your status past that anything that you can imagine to the state that Allah does not accept La ilaha illallah without Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the status. If you want eternal success, you can't attain it without Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Imam Malik Rahmatullah Alaihi Wasallam says something very interesting. He says, I swear by Allah, whoever believes that the status of the Prophet has decreased after his death, equivalent to a hair span, he has committed kufr. Imam Malik Rahmatullah Alaihi Wasallam, he was the Imam of Darul Hijra. The Prophet Sallallahu said in the narration that there will be a man, he will come and the people will beat the bats of their camel to seek knowledge from him. And Sufyan ibn Uyayn rahmatullah the famous muhaddis says, I swear by Allah that was no other than Imam Malik. Imam Malik rahmatullah he would give dars in the Masjid Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his halaqa became very large and some of them said why don't you speak louder why don't you get other people to pronounce it louder for you and imam malik rahmatullah alayhi recited the verse ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi oh you who believe do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he says, he said, don't you see the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And then he said, I swear by Allah, whoever believes that the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has decreased equivalent to a hair span, to a hair, he has committed kufr. He has committed kufr. And therefore, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was honorable when he lived and he is just as honorable as he died. As Abu Bakr when he came upon the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu he removed the cloth and he kissed the Prophet Sallallahu on the forehead and he said, Tibtahiyyan wa mayyatan ya Rasulullah. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, you are beautiful in life and you are just as beautiful in death. You are beautiful in life and you are just as beautiful in death. And this is the love that a believer should have for the Prophet Sallallahu Really? He should have more love than this for the Prophet Sallallahu And let me tell you the contempt with which Europe have shown to the Prophet Sallallahu and the vile manner that they have depicted the Prophet Sallallahu for over a thousand years. The lifespan of the Prophet Sallallahu in Western literature really spans about a thousand years. You and really to appreciate much of what I'm going to say now, you have to understand something about European history. Those people who formulated European thought. The first person to write about the Prophet Sallallahu and for it to come into the English language was a man called John of Damascus. This man was a Christian and he was a Hafiz of the Quran and he was an advisor to the Umayyads and he regarded Islam as a Christian heresy. That Islam had broken away from Christianity. Him and Theodore Abu Qurra translated the Surah Al-Ikhlas. And when they translated the Surah Al-Ikhlas, the translation is Qul Allahu Ahad. Say, Allah is one. Allah is Samad. Allah is independent. Allah is self-sufficient. When they translated it, they translated the word Samad as Allah is all spherical, beaten piece of metal compound. This was translated into Latin and then it got translated into all the European language and the immaculate God of Islam became an idol in Europe. They actually believed that the Muslims worshipped idols. And then what happened is that the Prophet ﷺ himself became this idol. Bishop Turpin in his chronicles mentions that when Charles the Great went into Spain, they found an idol of gold. And it was so high that it was high as the birds would fly. And it was made out of gold. And then and he mentions that Muhammad Billah, made this with his own hands. And this was a sculpture of him. And therefore they regarded that the Saracens, the Muslims worshipped the Prophet وسلم, who was an idol. This had such a deep impact on the English language that the Oxford English Dictionary mentions 
that there are 76 ways of spelling the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 